I caught up uh, with uh, Democratic Congresswoman uh, Debbie Dingell on exactly what Democrats want here. Everyone seems to agree that spending is out of control. Uh, when I had her on my Your World show on Fox News Channel, I tried to get clear, all right, what are you open to cut yourself? Take a look. So we you're are against what Republicans are talking, and uh, Kim Jeffries seemed to be open to a spending freeze, whether it's two percent over the next couple of years. Are you for that? Are you okay with that? I'm not going to give you an exact number, but I'm I'm open to understanding that we have to uh, address spending in this country. So, but so not I, that's in this not what I asked, Congressman. You are open, just to be clear, to a, some sort of a spending freeze, which would be for all government spending over at least the next two years. Are you open to that? I seem to have gotten. Sure that I'm, well, wait a minute. I, I seem to have gotten the sense from McKean Jeffries that he, he was open to that. A lot of progressives piled on him, but are you? I'm not for a 2% cut straight across the board because I think that there are programs that have to continue to exist. But I do believe that we should so have a 2% discussions increase, and, get and you're it done quite right. No, no, I'm sorry, just to be clear. A 2% increase, you're quite right, with inflation is actually a cut. You would not be open to that. You would not want that. I think we need to have discussions about how we address our spending problem, but you don't do it across the board because there are programs that shouldn't be cut, and quite frankly, there are programs that could be cut. All right, that was an interesting exchange, and at least getting from her, where some Democrats, more the progressive side of the party, having a big problem with Hakeem Jeffries, of course, their leader in the House, open to some freeze in spending, but not for too long and not too much. In her case, I'm not open to, to that at all as things stand now. So every vote will count here. Maya McGett is following a closely committee for a responsible federal budget. You know, you think about it, Maya, each side wants to protect its own ox from getting gored. I get that. But that is what stands in the way of a deal as we speak, right? Yeah, and at this point, we really just need to get this deal done. I'm so dismayed by Washington's inability to get something done until the absolute last moment. And in, a, in something like the debt ceiling, it actually has real costs. So to the fundamental question here is, is there savings that we could get out of the domestic discretionary portion of the budget or the full discretionary portion of the budget or the entire budget? Absolutely there are. There are savings that we can find in all areas of the budget. I think it's unfortunate that everything is not on the table in this discussion. We're only talking about discretionary spending. We need to look at all parts of the budget, including revenues. But for where we are right now, there's clearly a deal that they are very close to having, and they should just get this done. And it would be useful to have savings that will amount to hundreds of billions or even possibly trillions of dollars over the next decade while we have time to look at the other bigger drivers of our national debt. All right. Uh, we're talking about the fact that we owe more than we're worth and that we're running right now, you know, debt that's running about 118 percent of GDP. Having said that, though, I found interesting that Fitch out of nowhere, the ratings agency, came out and said it doesn't like what it's seeing here. We're on a negative ratings watch. They're, they're concerned. And this is apart from getting a deal done, I guess, Maya, over brinksmanship and the partisanship on display. That, that was among the primary reasons S&P downgraded our AAA rating back in 2011, when we also avoided default, uh, but all the craziness before it prompted that move. What do you think? Well, that's right. I mean, it's hard to imagine that the rating agencies can look at the U.S. and say, absolutely, everything's going well here, because clearly it's not. And whether it's a downgrade or a warning, the situation is, is just apparent, which is we have a fiscal trajectory that is unsustainable. Our debt's growing faster than the economy. Our interest pays are our interest payments are eclipsing important things like spending on children and national defense and Medicaid, uh, and we cannot continue down this path. At the same time, we also have a highly dysfunctional government where everything is about us versus them and a fight until the death and too much drama around things where we need to be cooperating and compromising. So it is hard to look at the U.S.'s behavior right now and say, this is the absolute safest place you can invest at the moment. We need to improve the way we are governing, and we need to improve the fiscal health of our country. You know, a lot of people are dancing around this issue of the X state, I guess, the moment at which we, we run out of money. Um, the Treasury Secretary has been saying it's, it's, it's June 1, so less than a week away or so. Um, Republicans think she's sort of, you know, hyping it a little bit to get them to act, which isn't a bad idea, even if she is. But, but having said that, what do you think is the real drop-dead date? So the first point I would make is we absolutely should not find out. We should lift the debt ceiling before the drop dead date. We should have lifted the debt ceiling months ago before we were even use, using extraordinary measures where we're taking money out of some trust funds and then putting it into others. 
The second thing I would say is that the Secretary of the Treasury is one of the most straightforward, honest people I know, and she is telling it like she sees it. And she is not saying it is 100% June 1st. She's saying that there is a very, very strong chance that it's June 1st or around that time. And so that is an important warning for us to have because the worst thing would be to inadvertently go up to the X date and hit it and pass it because we didn't know when, when we had to make these changes. The way that you measure this, it's impossible to be precise. Let's assume it's June 1st. Let's get a deal done today, Neil. Let's just get this done, lift the debt ceiling, and then turn our attention to some of the bigger drivers of the debt that we really have to work on. You know, only in these days, Maya, can you sound absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are absolutely right. You are right on everything you just said. And cooler, calmer uh, heads should prevail here and just assess the situation for what it is and do something. A lot's on the line. Maya, I always learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neil.